And good evening, everyone. Welcome to your Tuesday night edition of Fantasy Football Today. Adam Azer and Dan Schneier here. And we're talking about the waiver wire, which has a big wrinkle in it from our episode this morning because Greg Dortch, he's getting an MRI on the thumb. That's not yeah. good. He may not play. Hopefully you have an extra day to get the results and waivers maybe they don't run till Wednesday night for you. That'd be great. But be a little bit cautious with Mr. Dortch. What's up, Mr. Schneier? Not much, man. Having a good time here. Getting close to Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I don't know if I've told you that before, but it's my number one. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's the absolute my least best. is actually my least favorite holiday now uh, well, because of football, because of work. It is my uh, busiest day of the year. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when they was it two years ago, they canceled the the night game because right. of COVID. I think. Oh my gosh, it was like that. <laughs> I really that was like happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Otherwise, it is just work, 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 work. Peeling potatoes, <laughs> putting the ham in the oven, work, 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 work. Brushing your teeth in the sink. Uh, brushing my teeth in the sink. You know, the sink, by the way, was out of commission for 24 hours this weekend. So where did you go to brush your teeth? Did you the just bathroom. not brush your teeth for the 24? Bathroom. Oh, you went to the little bathroom. I brushed. I brushed. Yeah, okay, we hope. Uh, so, so what do you love so much about Thanksgiving? Uh, well, I love just the combination of three things. One, the food, my favorite dish is the go-to sweet potatoes with the marshmallow toasted on top. I freaking yeah. love that dish. I yeah. crush that oh. dish. So um, I just have way too much of that every year. The other thing is just like nobody cares if you just like overindulge with food. Like everybody's eating an incredible amount. You're having seconds. No one's like judging you. Everyone's like, yeah, it's just Thanksgiving. You just keep eating. Yeah. Just keep eating even if you're full. You enjoy the food. And then you just sit on the couch and watch football. It's just like a dream come true Thanksgiving. Yeah. This year there's higher stakes though because the Giants are playing on Thanksgiving. So – and obviously, yeah. no one expects them to win that game. They're like double, almost double digit underdogs now. Oh, they're going to get crushed. I, I, know. Everybody. I, mean, I know. <laughs> let's be real here. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we welcome all of you. Uh, hope you're all going to have an amazing Thanksgiving. The um, funny, the buzz was that uh, the yesterday's Beyond the Box score, people, I didn't say this, but people said it was <laughs> quote, the best of the season. I don't no. know. Who yeah, said so that? Said, no, I don't know. I just some people, you know. I don't know. Yeah, some people. Um, When's the yeah, last time got... I heard that some people thing before? Who's saying it's some people? I've heard that there was like a guy. He had like yellow hair, yellow skin, yellow hair, uh, orange no, hair. I don't even. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> well, he did do the some people thing where he couldn't quote the people, and he did the people like some people are saying it. Many people are saying. Call it. name those people. All right, all right. I, I can't believe you just waded into those water, waters. All right, so <laughs> let's uh, let's read some some questions here. And uh, Pat from Ohio is our guy. What is up, fellas? What's up, Pat? What's up, Pat? How, How you here? doing, man? Um, it's like a ticking time bomb until David A. joins the chat to just chastise me. Happy Thanksgiving to all the Americans out there from a Canadian Canadian up in the Great White North who, unlike Adam, doesn't shower in the. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you rather have long term, uh, Traylon Burks or Josh Palmer? Traylon Burks for me, for sure. I think Palmer could actually be more productive with these receivers in the line, but we don't know what's going to happen. With Mike Williams re aggravating the high ankle sprain. Oh. According to Staley, the coach, it's not as bad as the first one, but what does that mean? He missed a lot right. of time with the first one, right. and it's still one of those ankle sprains. So I think Palmer actually benefits from having Allen on the field, creates less attention in his direction, but I still definitely go Traylon Burks here. Traylon okay. Burks is somebody I talked about before the Thursday night game last week as a guy you had to stash. He showed what he's capable of and what the talent can do, and I like Ryan Tannehill as a thrower of the football personally. I just think he throws a really good ball, and so I think that he's going to have a really nice stretch run. I'm, I'm in on Burks. It's a very interesting question here because if you told me Mike Williams was out for the year, then it'd be a, a layup, Josh Palmer. If you told me Mike I'm Williams, still on Burks. I'm not. I mean, you're just talking I, about – I like the just, talent more. Uh, you, you know what? That's fine. I, I get that. Um, but how many more passing yards are you going to get from the from the Chargers compared to the Titans? Right. And also, you st like, I hope this changes, and I, I think it will. But you still have Robert Woods and Nick Westbrook Akine playing more than Traylon Burks. Whereas Josh Palmer, when he's playing and the other guys are out, he's just True. he's off the field almost all the time. Um, but you know, I think if Mike Williams misses only one game, maybe zero, uh, I doubt that. But then it's then it's easily Burks because I don't really think Palmer is going to be worth using if both of those wide receivers right. are, are playing. Um, Look who decided to show up for work today at Dan. That's good. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Oh, look at the box yesterday. <laughs> it's what a are heavy we doing? week. What are we doing with James Robinson? 
Yeah, good question. Our boy Robert Thomas. So I actually wasn't in the fortunate position of having to play him in my starting lineup last week. I knew the game script was bad against the Patriots, but at the same time, I was like, is it bad? They should be within one score the whole game, the Jets, and they were, and still they were in, unable to get anything going in the run game. The hope here with James Robinson is the switch over at quarterback to Mike White could spark the offense, and that's exactly what they need, some kind of spark on that offense. They had, what, two yards in the second half of a football game last week with Zach Wilson. So I would hold him at least for one more week to see what the offense looks like with a new quarterback in and how that impacts Robinson, Carter, all of those players. It could be Flacco. And it could be Flacco. Sorry, you're right. It yeah. could be Flacco. Um, Mike White is the one who throws to the running backs all the time. So that would probably be Flacco did it a bunch too, though, earlier this season. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what the target share was because he was throwing literally 50 times a game. I know you're right. Good point. Um, But he did throw to to the running backs. Uh, All right. Um, Geno Smith or Jimmy Garoppolo rest of season. That's a great question, especially with Jimmy Garoppolo. We, We talked about this, me and Chris or Chris and I, I should say on the, Monday night football FFT and five recap. And it's like at this point with Jimmy Garoppolo, yeah, there's no rushing floor, but at the same time with that, with those weapons, he is arguably the three best after the catch players in the NFL. He's a good, like we, we kind of settled in on the back end of the top 12. So like a QB one, Adam, I don't know where you feel about how you feel about that. Exactly the same way. Right. And Gino's also in that range too. So it's really close for me between this one. I think I would lean Jimmy Garoppolo. I'll take Gino. I think, you know, it's a little bit of a risk to inflate Garoppolo playing the playing the Cardinals without their best cornerback. Okay. Um, who's kind of the key to their defense. Uh, you know, Gino's been better and Garoppolo, yeah, I mean, he just had a bad game the week before because they, you know, they ran the ball a lot. But yeah, I don't look, they're both good. I think Gino's uh, better. He's got he can give you the rushing totals. Uh, you know, it's and he throws downfield a lot more often. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not going to get too deep into it. They're obviously close, but but I'm going to take Geno here. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones or DeAndre? Oh, you know what? Yeah, they're close. All right, Donovan Peoples-Jones or DeAndre Swift? What were you going to say? Well, I just you're, – you're rarely even getting 30 pass attempts from Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy, right. So – he is going to be among the leaders in yards per attempt. He always is. And touchdowns should. That's where I'm really looking at the touchdowns. That is not his thing. Typically. No, it hasn't been, but he has never had these weapons. Yeah. He has not had these weapons. Yeah. Um, it's easily Donovan people's Jones for me. Yeah. Same. I like Donald people's Jones this week and rest of season. Almost. I, I watched Swift on film. I will say this from watching the giants lions film this week. I'm out on Swift rest of season. I think there's an obvious reason. Everybody who plays fantasy is like, what are the Lions doing? They're playing Justin Jackson for all these snaps. Jamal Williams for all these snaps. John Dre Swift's the greatest talent ever. When you watch the tape, you see a lot of processing errors from DeAndre Swift, and that's exactly why he doesn't play. There was a third and one that's that he didn't why he convert. doesn't play? That's exactly why. If you he watch play because he's not, he's not healthy. Oh, if you watch the hard knocks, remember what Deuce Staley was screaming at him for him. He's like, you could be the best running back in the league, but you have to go. You have to process these runs faster. You have to attack downfield and get vertical. And he just doesn't do that. When he didn't convert that third and one early in the game, it was like six, three, and it was still a game. That was like the worst, one of the worst runs I've seen on tape. He was super hesitant, didn't get vertical, tried to bounce outside and got strung out by Darnay Holmes and the no gain. I mean, you see all these processing mental errors from DeAndre Swift on tape. And I'm pretty sure in my mind, at least that's why he doesn't play every snap. Interesting. All right. I have Olave, Watson, Hollywood Brown, and Godwin. I have uh, Deshaun Watson. Do I trade one of my wide receivers to get Amari Cooper rest of season and complete the stack? Ooh. I would trade it. Yeah. I would I like that. not trade Diggs. No, I of course not. Trade Diggs. Olave, Hollywood, and Watson, obviously, for Cooper. Not all together. No, no, Cooper. not all together. Would I think you could Godwin? I, yeah, I, I would trade Godwin for Cooper and have PPR. Ooh. Godwin for Cooper, rest of season with Deshaun coming back. Is there any concern at all for you, Adam, that Deshaun coming back into the mix could actually hurt Cooper in the short term, but be good for the fantasy playoffs if they need some time to build a rapport, if they're a little off and the timing isn't right? Because we've seen that a lot with receivers yeah. coming over. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I, or is he just that good? Cooper? No, I mean, I, it's a great it point. It, you know, it's not Deshaun Watson hasn't played football in, in, you know, a long two years, time. yeah, two years, and it's a new coach, new system, new everything, new yeah. receivers. That's not a bad point. 
I'm a little nervous about it to be to be honest. I don't think I would do Godwin, but I think I would do any combination of Olave and Brown or Olave and Watson. Though Olave, I, I really like Watson. <laughs> we've we've discussed that throughout the last week and a half. And Olave yeah. is damn good too. I I don't know if I I would rather I would try first of all, Kyle. I would try to do any package that doesn't involve Godwin and does involve Hollywood Brown. A two player package that you can ship off Brown. He's the one I want the least of these of this group. And then you could throw in like Olave or Watson if you have to, but, um, and I put a lave over Watson. So you can throw in Watson or a lave, but I wouldn't put Godwin in that. I dropped Latavius Murray for Eliza Mitchell last week. Should I regret it? Yeah. I mean, you unfortunately, had no you had no way of knowing it. Like you can't beat yourself over up yeah. over it, David, but at the same time, it's not a great net net for you because Latavius is just going to grind out touches now. All right. Let's take a look at our, our schedule for week 12. Okay. Are we going with a Camara at San Francisco or Montgomery at the Jets. Hmm. I am going with Kamara if Trevor Simeon is playing quarterback for the Bears and Justin Fields is not in. And I will go with no, I'm still I'm going Kamara either way. The matchup sucks regardless for, for Monty. The matchup is much worse for Kamara though. I mean, sure, but with if, if, if Fields isn't back. on the feet, yeah, but Kamara can get stuff done through the air. He can. Monty oh, can I am tempted to say Montgomery, which makes me sick. If uh, Semyon's playing, that is he's not doing anything, Montgomery. Um that ball offense is not moving the ball with Trevor Simeon against the Jets defense. I don't know about that. Rashad, Ramondre Stevenson did not run the ball very well last week against the Jets defense. No, no. Um they have a very good defense, no question. Uh, but he did last year, I mean, for what it's worth. Right. Last year playing for the Saints, Trevor Simeon. Running a running back had seven or more targets in all four games that Simeon started last year. That's a good point. So now, it didn't happen when himself. he started for the Broncos in 2016 and 17. He wasn't throwing to the running backs, but all right. Uh, Pittman or Olave? Well, are we really doing start or sit right now? <laughs> Can we do other, other stuff? All right, let's Tuesday is not the day for start and sit. I don't even but... know the matchups, but Pittman's got the Steelers. Olave. Olave's at the Niners. No, I'm taking, I'm taking uh, Pittman, I think. Half, oh, it's full PPR. No, half PPR. I'm going to stick Olave. I don't know. The Niners scare me a little bit. They do. Then they should. But and, and Olave scare. Olave is to me is a sell high. Really? Okay. So <clears throat> they took Andy Dalton off the field for 30 percent of the snaps last week. Those are all running plays. It's mm-hmm. Taysom Hill. I, I, Those are all bad plays for Olave. You're right. I think that's a little high, 30 percent, but it's gonna. I think it's gonna keep happening. Um, to a degree. And look, he didn't have that good of a game except for that deep ball where he beat Ramsey. And he's great. It's not against Olave, but I can't rely on that. Uh, Andy Dalton has been poisoned for him. And I, I think that's more likely to continue than what we saw last week against the Rams or two days ago against the Rams. I think that's fair. Drop O meter. Oh, David, you got a lot of questions here. Drop O meter on Brian Ron- Robinson and DJ Moore and non PPR. Okay. DJ Moore for me is not on the drop a meter right now. He's on the watch list. I want to see what happens with Sam Darnold as obviously Heath Cummings immediately tweeted out. There were some pretty solid trends with DJ Moore last season with Sam Darnold from an overall volume standpoint. A lot of targets funneled his way from Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold now named the starting quarterback for the Panthers, at least for now. Who knows how long that will last. But for now, I'm going to wait it out and see if that can carry over the trend from last season and he can be more of a high volume play for fantasy football, even in non PPR. So Brian Robinson on the flip side of that. Well, I was never high on Robinson to begin with. Great story. I don't love him as a player, as a talent or anything like that. He's a touchdown or bus guy for me. And there's not too many more game scripts that look too promising in my mind for Robinson. Um, even you talk about the Giants who are, fa- are like a faltering team. The, the, the commanders have them twice. Well, the Giants get beat on runs to the outside with power and gap. They do not get beat on runs to the inside against Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence. And that's where Antonio Gibson will thrive. So I would drop Brian Robinson. I'm not, I'm not high on him. I'd probably drop DJ Moore in non PPR. You don't want to wait out for the Darnold. No. I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen a whole season of Darnold. The first know, three, so four bad. games were great because Darnold was great. He was throwing for 300 yards a game. And then after that, DJ Moore was pretty lousy and Darnold was lousy and we couldn't wait for Baker Mayfield and we couldn't wait for PJ Walker. And I just refuse to believe that Sam Darnold is going to be the answer here. Um, but, uh, and it's not, if it was full PPR, it'd be the opposite, but it's non PPR. So, you know, you really need DJ Moore to score a touchdown. I just don't think that's going to happen often. 
Uh, Elliot says, Adam, sometimes you say you dive into every throw from a particular quarterback or player. I The only one I did that for was Lamar Jackson. Oh, yeah. What did you see there? Because he's been really off in the metrics. I saw the I saw him awful to start the game. Settled in pretty well, I thought, and ended up throwing the ball well. But I just saw him. I saw the Panthers really kind of making him a passer. And mm-hmm. really felt like when they were rushing him, they were doing so with the intention of not letting him get to the outside. And uh, someone, I think, I forget which newspaper, Baltimore Sun or something like that, was writing about how teams are doing that. They're, they're really contain, trying to contain Lamar Jackson, make him a thrower. And I, don't, I mean, it, 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 she's just not getting it done. And they, they're not getting it done. You know, they're just not a, not a dynamic offense right now. Uh, the one thing I'd say is uh, I really like what we're seeing from Gabe Davis. I think he's got an amazing matchup for it. Like, there's no team that's a better matchup for Gabe Davis than the Lions. They give up the most big pass plays in football. Uh, I think we're seeing an evolution from him. I talked about that with Jacob yesterday on the best episode of the Beyond the Box. <laughs> so that's it. How about you? What have you dug into? Yeah, this is a Thanksgiving week. I've had family in town. I'm doing a lot of stuff around the house. I haven't watched any tape but Giants Lions this week, unfortunately. So one thing I will say is Amon Ross St. Brown creates underneath. Amon, the, the hype around Amon Ross St. Brown, I understand it. If you like what Cooper Cup does to get open as a wide receiver, he is Cooper Cup light. Yeah, I just wish there was a little bit more production there. Um, yep. This is so one of the line. I took some notes on. It's like, in in our mind, Amon Ross St. Brown is incredible. But in yeah, reality, right. he's been very good. But fantasy wise, right, right. You know, but now I want to be I want to be fair to him too, as far as what we our perception would be on him, Adam. It's back to back weeks now where he was tackled at the one yard line, and if he just gets <laughs> one more yard on either of those, it's it's a, it's a whole different fantasy box score. That's a great point. Uh, what I would say is that uh, Jamal Williams is killing him because it's that just is true. Every possession ends in a Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams. Is just... you know, I think they're. I think they might give the Bills a game. I do too. I took them getting ten points, and I loved it. Now the lines moved to nine and a half, but I love them getting ten. All right, Latavius Murray or Pacheco? Pacheco for sure, dude. If you have Pacheco, hang on tight because I think there could be potential league winning upside for Pacheco. That was the, actually the one player who I've had a chance but, to but watch. Really, a, this is a guy who's never catches the ball. You don't like those. I don't care. I don't like those guys, but this is also a guy who's doing. So what the Chiefs wanted out of Clyde Edwards Alaire, at least last year and this year, we saw Clyde Edwards Alaire. Like, why the hell are they not designing passes to him? Isn't that what he was built to be coming out of college? Andy Reid called him Brian Westbrook 2.0. Well, that wasn't a part of his game. So what they wanted to rely on Clyde Edwards Hilaire was to run between the tackles when teams were playing two high safeties and all these like looks with linebackers dropping to death. And he couldn't do it despite them having a really good offensive line. But Pacheco looks so different between the tackles, man. There was a run he had against the Chargers where he just gets into the hole fast and just uses his foot speed. He has legit speed out there. Like they love to accrue these speed players. He's the next to that bunch. And I think in that role, all the facing all those light boxes that are playing the pass as they always do against the Chiefs. Pacheco could be a really good down. I mean, I don't think he's going to get catches, but he could be like a guy that racks up 80 to 100 every game with a touchdown in most of them. I'm going to go with Murray. <laughs> I understand. There's more I volume think- there. The only thing that Pacheco will beat Murray in is mm-hmm. yards per carry, and he will crush him there. He will be a much better. I was going to crush. Do you want to do a friendly side bet, Pacheco versus Murray, if they both stay healthy rest of the season? Yeah. Okay. In, in what? Full PPR? Um, no, half at most. Well, why? Because who, who plays? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> full PPR is not a standard league. Half is the good in between. Fine. 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 Most I people just, play half. I think Pacheco is going to be very productive from an NFL standpoint. I'm uh, going to start totaling these tallies up. A little worried about it. <laughs> Don't you better write it down. I'm not writing it down. You write it down. I'll write it down. I'll, write it. Forward, Pacheco I'll write it and we'll record it. You know what that's from? I'll write it. We'll do it live. Oh, we'll do it live. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I sure do. Uh, what to play it to play about? What does that mean? Yeah. The show? <laughs> yeah, that's so good. What a psycho that guy is. All right, yeah. let's, it's a bet. Um, all right, all right. Let's see. Paris, Hold on. I need to jump off for a quick second. I'll be on in half a second. I'm on the air with you. What the hell? Paris Campbell or Josh Palmer? That's going to depend on Mike Williams. Uh, we'll put it that I'm way. I'm back. I'm back. No, you know what? I don't need you. That was the best, <laughs> that was the best segment we've ever done. It was six seconds. Um, where is the theme song that I used from the Fantasy Cops from? That oh, is actually the that, was that was created for us. It's the uh, best. Yeah. Let's see. Where Where is it? 
it's uh, we had a company make it for us. It's fun. It, hit, it hits every time. <laughs> All right. Eric asks, oh, look, and it's Eric from Billy Madison. Oh, that's perfect. Still high on Debo. Which wide receiver could I get? I, yeah, I like this move a lot. He just came off a touchdown game. We know that those, we know for sure that it's going to be frustrating with those yeah. 49ers players from a touchdown standpoint week to week. I like going for Godwin of this bunch. Oh, no, yeah. your other wide receivers are there. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Those are his other wide receivers. Um, Oh, I like the last question. We have to answer that too. Yeah, those one. are yeah. those are his other wide receivers. Who is he going to try to get? Maybe this is a good time to get him on Ross St. Brown. Like I mentioned, he was a yard away from two touchdowns the past two weeks. So maybe try Debo for him on Raw. Yeah, that's a great call. Who has and, the better? I definitely have the better five o'clock shadow. Adam definitely has the better. <laughs> five I've, 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 I've definitely praised it before. And if I were Adam and I, I, you can tell from his five o'clock shadow that he, if he wanted to, could grow out a sick beard. And for some reason, he just continue. Is this that is not, not right? a five o'clock shadow, though. This is almost a beard for me. Oh, that's like that's 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 like that's a week's worth or something. No, I shaved on Saturday. Yeah, that's like a few days. I mean, but could you grow a sick beard if you wanted to? No. Oh, I thought you could. So I, I was wrong about that. I thought you had and you, that. You, no. you could grow a beard. I no, could. the opposite. I can't. I don't have the connection. You don't have the connection? No. <laughs> I just, it's just like it won't get poofy for me. It just, <laughs> oh, mine gets poofy. Itchy and, yeah. Yeah, it. Never worth it. Um, Let's see. I've got Brady and Kyler. Should I cut Brady for Gino? Uh, I have no trust in Brady. Should I? St- oh no, should he just steal? I don't think he's saying cut Brady here, is he? I don't know. Okay. Um, maybe if you can fit Gino and waivers. Yeah, I don't. No, actually, no. I, I mean, I look. This Cleveland Browns defense has been such a disaster this year. I saw a couple game clips that were floating around Twitter of just like horrific effort from the Browns defense, like the the total like I've quit on this defense type of effort. Uh, I'm not going to name names. You can go find those clips yourself. Julius so, Randall. Julius Randall. What? That's every every possession of Julius Randall, he is just daydreaming. Oh, oh. <laughs> then you can oh. find a lot of those clips on Twitter. Yeah, of Julius Randall. Yeah, I mean, I I'm such a bad Knicks fan. I haven't watched. You're not a, you're not a Knicks fan. You're just you know. I will be if they're ever good again. <laughs> I will be if James Dolan moves on from the team. Uh, okay. So anyway, I think it's a rest of season question. Yeah, though. I yeah. I could claim him depending on how deep your benches are. Um, but as far as cutting one of those two for him, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> this Twitter handle, Big Nick Energy, just cracks me up. It has Big. this this uh, this uh, clip of of Julius Randall just not playing any. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, back to football. Let's do it. Drop two: Higby, Cook, Slayton, Campbell, Drake, PPR. Drake, I'll drop Drake for sure out of this bunch. He's the first one that comes to mind. Um, and I'll also be dropping Brandon Cooks. Yeah. I'm out on Cooks. How do you feel about Slayton rest of season? I feel really good about Darius Slayton. Did you see what Seth Walder put out today? No. Oh, man, this was good this stuff. Is this the separation guy? Separation guy. Yeah, that is the separation guy. And he showed Slayton separation numbers, and they are tracking with, like, the best, some of the best receivers in the NFL right now. Wow. Seth, looks- degree- he, he should be Seth's degree of separation. And he had two clips on film, one whip route that Slayton ran that he created four yards of separation, and then a nice like inside out run uh, route. Man, he looked good on tape. I don't so get anything for that. Seth degree of separation. Uh, Sixth degree. All right. Oh my God. That's not good at all. Uh, <laughs> Seth's Seth degree of separation. I need, I need who I even need says two. like six degree of separation? <laughs> I need to mac and cheese, stuffing, or mashed potatoes. And gravy. The worst part about this is like you said the bad joke. Nobody responded. Thomas didn't even react. I've seen Thomas in the background. He was he was just stoic back there. And then you like had to confirm it. Like you're like, wait, I don't get anything for that. Like, no, you realized you didn't when no one reacted the first time, Adam. Well, a degree of separation is a thing. Okay, it's not something anyone ever says though. Six degrees of social of separation. Six degrees of separation is the idea that all people are six or fewer social connections away from each other. This is cool. actually this is a freaking brilliant pun. I'm sorry <laughs> if, that if you, you do know, say so yourself. Noic Tomics didn't get it. Now pick two of these damn side dishes or <laughs> take your headphones off and leave for five minutes again. Four seconds. 
Uh, let's see. Mac and cheese stuffing. Wow, this is as tough as it gets because these are my one, two, and three for side dishes. It is. It is. These are my one, two, and three. I said earlier the sweet potatoes, the marshmallow, but if I really had to throw out any of these, I would never do it over the sweet potatoes. Oh, you lied earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not that I lied. It's just that's the one I – oh, it's sweet. It's sugary. It's great. But I'm not going to give up any of this. These are the staples. These are the core. Yeah. So if you're only allowed to pick two, I am – weirdly, my first choice is stuffing because I'm a huge – I love the stuffing. And then two would be – that's the tough one. I'm going mashed potatoes just because of one simple fact, Adam, and it's that when I eat a lot of mac and cheese, the next day is not a good day for me <laughs> in the morning. Or your roommates. <laughs> or anyone uh... who lives with me. Yeah, uh, I, I'm going to sit mashed potatoes, and I never do. I'm not a gravy guy at all. Um, um, you know what? We share that. I don't do gravy, but I bet I, I, I like gravy. Like, have you ever had disco oh. fries at a diner? I, I don't really care for gravy. They're pretty good, disco fries. Mozzarella, che- mutz, a little mutz, and a little gravy. Little mutz, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm a I'm a corn souffle guy. I'll probably talk about it on tomorrow's oh, show. Oh, that's – what the – who even makes that? Uh, my mom. Is it good? What's in a corn souffle? It's the best. Uh, Can you tell me what's in it? I've never had it. It's basically just a lot of corn. Uh, And what? It's corn. It's cream corn. It's sour cream. It's butter. It's corn meal. So it ends up. Oh, no, you'd love it. You like corn? I like corn, but all that other stuff is bad for me. I can't go heavy dairy like that. All right. Well, I hate sour cream. uh, I hate corn pudding kind of deal, but with a with a hard uh, with like a, a crispy top. Okay. It, it's you know if you get I like the, the crispy top, right, it's so good. I mean, it's okay. so good. okay. And, anyway, and, and here's the thing: like I, my mom, uh, it was her friend's recipe. She gave it to me and my wife. We started making it, and now we are required to bring it to <laughs> nice because and then they and then her relatives bring it to their friends. Like, it's everybody loves That's it. That's cool. Terrific. Yeah. All right. All right. Give it a um, shot. We have waivers that roll into next week. Should I use my number one waiver on P Ryan? And also Ravens are 49ers. Yeah, that's a that's a we're, let's let's tackle the first one first. Um, wow, we know nothing about it. All we know is the last time Mixon had a concussion, he missed two weeks. But that doesn't tell us anything because this doesn't give us the severity of this one. The NFL is coming down harder on him. I would bet right now that he misses just one game. Yeah. So number one waiver for Pirine seems a little rich, but if you're in a spot where you need a win right now, Pirine can easily get you an R- RB1 numbers if he just lucks into some touchdowns. And he's being, he's involved in the past game. Like he's doing everything that you would expect from Mixon uh, when he's in. So I don't hate the idea if you're desperate for a win, but if you're thinking more long-term, I don't love it. And then Ravens versus 49ers, uh, Ravens or 49ers, Remind me of the matchups there real quick. I think it's 49ers Saints. New Orleans and yeah. Baltimore has uh, the Jaguars on the road. I'll take 49ers here. I think I like what I've seen from the Ravens defense after adding Roquan Smith, but I also think Jaguars after a bye with Doug Peterson are going to have a good game plan. So I'll take the Niners. If I have Jalen Hurts, should I pick up Deshaun Watson? No. You know, I'm going to say yes just to keep him away from your other opponent. Okay. Uh, I don't mind that. Pick this is a tough one. Pickens or Wat or Watson rest of season. Not tough for me. It's Christian Watson without a doubt. All right. Pickens was pretty damn good last. I week. will say this though. I should take that back because I I haven't seen the tape yet. But people are raving about the Steelers' offense after the bye week. They say they like what they what they're seeing on uh from the changes they made from the bye, and that will help not only Pickens but the entire offense. So maybe I should rethink that. But I, I I'm not going to give up my boy Christian Watson. Talent situation, it's all there for him. Someone wants Tony Pollard for Pierce and Schultz in full PPR. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I think I, I don't would think do so. That. I think I would. I think I would take Pierce and Schultz. You unless wouldn't? he needs a, unless he needs a tight end. I don't think so. Oh, he doesn't have a tight end. He is just Gerald Everett. <laughs> um. Okay. I think I can do it just because I like Schultz enough. Yeah. Um. I mean, I I think what to expect from Tony Pollard is is very interesting. True. Um, very difficult, but he has by far and away more league winning upside than the than those other two. He has more league winning upside than almost anyone. In the I know <laughs> he's incredible. Right. He's a hard player to trade for that reason. Uh, I think I'm on an island here. Taysom Hill and Standard as its tight end is he still startable? Yeah. I would certainly like to see it one more week, but I do think they want to keep getting him involved. So. Um, True, but we said that after his big breakout, and then he had like a you know a big regression. This was different. I mean, he, 
Andy Dalton said he was getting frustrated with how much they were putting Taysom Hill <laughs> in the game. You know, they we know they don't trust Andy Dalton. They would yeah, think who would the quarterback change. So um, I wonder, like, is there any way for me to find out how many snaps he lined up at quarterback last week? Because he didn't play like a season high in snaps or anything. Might but, be something on True Media, but I won't be able to pull it off right away. All right, I'll I'll give it a look. Um. Okay. All right. Anyway, I'll get some more questions up, and while while uh, Dan blabbers, I'll try to look up. Uh, <laughs> who would you rather have rest of season here? Go, read this question and, and answer, please. Okay. Full PPR from Rochelle. 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 <laughs> Rochelle wants to know Jimmy G or Kyler rest of season. Ooh, that's pretty tough for me. <laughs> I'll go Kyler, though. I like more of the league-winning upside with Kyler. But if you like having more stability at the quarterback position, Jimmy G is a fine call there. Who should I drop to get Traylon Burks? Brandon Cooks, Isaiah Pacheco, Raheem Mostert, or Rashad White? I would drip Raheem Mostert for sure. You have Rashad White and Pacheco already operating in that role. I don't Ooh. love Cooks, but I would, I would still drop, drop Cooks. Yeah, it's either Cooks or Mostert. I can understand that, but... For me, it's Mostert. Okay. Position. Uh, I have no idea how to find this. I'm trying to look, too. Okay. This is so useless. I don't think anybody... True Media has everything. I'm sure I can find it by the end of the show. All right. Uh, rest of season, Juju or Cortland Sutton in PPR? Oh, Juju. Yeah. I haven't seen anything on him. I'm not sure he's coming back this week, but I hope I hope he does. Uh, let's see. Um, Christian Watson. What do we have? To, we have to pick one of these guys. Uh, oh, full PPR. All right, who is Houston is playing Miami? They have a I'll go good... Gabe Davis. I'm going to go Gabe Davis too. It's either going to be him or Damian Pierce, but I will go. With All him. I know is. Why I would start Davis in all these leagues and it'll be in a lot of my DFS lineups. Jacob Gibbs, I'm sure. Did he talk about it? I didn't get a chance to listen yet to let yesterday's show. Did he talk about Davis's route participation and all, and all those trending and all those things trending up? Yes, he did. Okay. Now you combine that with a Detroit Lions pass defense that's terrible and plays a ton of man coverage. And all of those are a recipe for a Davis explosion game to me. So it's Davis for sure for me. Uh, should I use my first overall claim on Burks or save it for the playoffs? Hmm. I play in so few leagues like this. It's always so hard for me to figure these ones out, Adam, because all the leagues I'm in have the free agent budget. I don't have like that. You know, you get your number one claimer. Yeah. You want to kind of like save it. There's like a whole game to it. So do you have a better answer for him based on that? I feel like I, I won't um, give the best answer because I don't know it as well. Like, do you want to save them? Like, how? what's the save game like? Okay, so when you get to the playoffs, six teams are going to be eliminated immediately. So... You know, if any of them have higher waiver priorities than you, then you're going to be moving up. I, I don't have a great answer for this. My, my, my answer would be, do you think Traylon Burks can help you win the league? And if I you do. do, then you should just go ahead and get him. Okay. So then, yes, go for it. Uh, I just got a trade offer from Dave. Oh, this is interesting. He's offering me Adam Thielen and Saquon Barkley for Juju Smith-Schuster and Stefan Diggs. Say that again. This is Dave's trade, and it's Adam. Well, say it one more time. Adam Azer, no, Adam Thielen, <laughs> and Saquon Barkley. Okay. To me, I give up Juju and Diggs. No. No? No. Um, Would yeah, you I, do that? I mean, Saquon uh, Barkley's numbers have been trending down. The All-Giants offensive it, it line has been trending down. Well, a week ago, you said he was RB1. I was, and I was wrong. It was a bad take. It was a bad, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have bad takes on this show. You got the, the no, good. The, love, but I'd rather have Diggs. Exactly. I'd rather have Diggs, and there's a much bigger drop off anyway yeah. between Juju and whoever the other guy was. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. good. Uh, Thielen. Yeah. Thielen's just droppable to me. I don't even, this, I wouldn't roster Thielen anywhere. Trevor Lawrence about to have his first 30 point game against Baltimore? No. No, no. This Baltimore defense is so much better with Roquan Smith in there. Um, Man, there's so much starter sit here. Jacoby Myers against the Vikings. Mm -hmm. Christian Watson at Philadelphia. Josh Palmer. What do they have at Arizona? Um, Rondell Moore. I don't think he's going to play against the Chargers and George Pickens at the Colts. 
How many? We need two. Palmer and Watson for me. Yeah, I mean, look, if, if Mike Williams plays, it's not Palmer, but Watson, and then I guess I'd go to Pickens. Yep. I am really, I don't know why, uh, I don't know why Jacoby Myers' numbers are so bad, but like he's got, I think, five games in a row with 60 or fewer yards. Yeah. Uh, it's a bad pass offense. Mac Jones has thrown four touchdowns in six games. Oof. Yeah. Um, so maybe we jumped the gun a little bit, calling him the best quarterback in that class. Remember, people were calling him the best oh. quarterback in that class last year. No, you know, that's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Cam Akers or Kyron Williams? Rest of the Akers. They're Akers. not. Kyron isn't doing anything. No, Akers for sure. Pitts is uh, Pitts is on IR. He's thankfully not dead. <laughs> Morrow, Greg Dulcich, or Evan Ingram? Morrow. Morrow has some really uh, good trends when it comes snaps. I believe his snap share has been really good since he's took over for, I think it was just actually been the last two weeks, but it's enough of a sample size for me to take him over these two at least. He has the best matchup. He's got the Seahawks. I'm going to take Ingram because at some point, unless you think you can stream every week, uh, but mm -hmm. at some point, uh, Waller is probably coming back. True. But if you think you can stream every week or if you desperately need a win, I guess I could see going Mar. He's just been so bad. He's so uninvolved. I, I don't care about the snaps or whatever. He's barely catching the ball. Yeah, that's true. He's just on the field a lot. Uh, yeah, like MVS is on the field a lot. You know? True. <laughs> I have Gus, I have Drake, I have Dobbins on IR. Uh, what do you do here? I think I dropped Drake for Dobbins. Yeah, drop, drop Drake. Dobbins is a better chance to help you win at the end of the season. Would you drop Rondale or Brandon Cooks for Curtis Samuel? Mm -hmm. No. I don't think so. Don't drop either. Samuel's really being phased out. Yeah. Um, Samuel is much better with Carson Wentz. He's much worse with Heineke. Monty, Pierce, Connor, White, Gabon, Olave. Oh, Full PPR. We need one running back, one wide receiver, and one flex. I almost feel like we're on the mailbag. Connor is show. the running back. He's facing the Chargers. Okay. I'm good with that. Godwin. 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 No, uh, Godwin and Montgomery. Pierce. All right, it's Connor and Godwin for sure. And then it's either, for me, it's either going to be Montgomery or Pierce. So I have to decide later in the week. Okay. I can live with that. You can live with that? Okay. I'm going to try to read non-starter sit questions if possible. How is it? Yep. I take Adam Azer. Oh, I take him. Oh, I take me over Adam Thielen. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I would do. Just with the enjoyment I would get from watching Adam Azer trying to run routes on an NFL field with a helmet and pads and, <laughs> and everything, that would be worth anything to me. I don't know. I, that's not how you spell my name. So if that was on my jersey, I wouldn't be very happy. <laughs> Did I drop Kyler Murray or Herbert for Watson? Kyler or Herbert for Watson? No way am I dropping Herbert. I'm Definitely not dropping not either. Yeah, I'm not either. Would you drop Komet for Jude? Yes. Yep. Uh, Especially because you have Fryermuth. Yeah. Love Fryermuth right now. Is Mike Boone worth a stash? I believe he can come back next week. No. That whole offense is an absolute disaster. I think I saw something from JJ Zacharizing today that was like, uh, I'm going to miss it now, but I think it's pretty sure Jamal Williams has more touchdowns this season than the entire Broncos offense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was his stat. That's really funny. Um, all right. He needs a win. All right. We did a waiver wire question. Good. Oh, Andrew, what happened, man? You all right. No, he came up. He had that one last time. I don't know if that's it. I feel like it's a, it's a bit of a, Andrew, you can let us know. Or I hope you're okay, but. Something tells wow. me that's a joke avatar. Wow. What if it isn't? <laughs> I know. I, what if it isn't? <laughs> walking on eggshells right there. All right, rank uh, these waiver wire priorities. Beckham, Trevor Lawrence, really? Pirine, Chiefs, Robinson, Acre. Uh, let's see. Pirine won for sure. He could help you in a week up right away. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Chiefs D. <laughs> this gets gross after this. Um, Chiefs D, Trevor Lawrence for me. Mm, yeah. Unless you suck at quarterback. Akers, I guess. Next, Jarvis Landry. But definitely P. Ryan first. For sure. Would you trade DK Metcalf for Jeff Wilson and Christian Watson in PPR? Ooh, I like that trade. I do. I will be honest with you, Adam. I'm incredibly high on Jeff Wilson rest of season. I may get burned by this, but there are so many factors I like about his breakout before the bye week. It's the snap share. It's the fact that teams are playing this Dolphins offense in such a different way than they did at the beginning of the season. They have to respect the speed of these receivers. They're playing safety so far off the ball. 
The second level defenders are dropping so far into their zones. I just think it's prime for a Shanahan style offense with Mike McDaniel to chew up yards on the ground with that zone blocking scheme. That's obviously these offensive linemen are getting better with it. They've had more reps. They're getting more comfortable with it. The continuity is still there. They haven't had too many injuries on that line. So I love Wilson the rest of the season. I think he could potentially be a top 12 back. I know it sounds bold, but no, I would make that, Yeah. Was... So I would make that trade for Wilson straight up, but you also get Watson. So I really like the deal. Oh, here's one from David A. My daughter didn't want to miss the show we were watching, so she broke the <laughs> sink <laughs> to see the TV. Good. I am so happy that Adam revealed that ridiculous story about his life. So now David A. It takes a little bit of the heat Big off news. me from David A. What? Big news. The the bedroom has been fixed. If for now. No. It, w- <laughs> the bedroom that had mold. And You've no- had like six straight months of a house issue. Is it yeah, at, at some point you got to sell this lemon? Is at some point you got to sell this lemon to somebody. It's yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna try. Such a lemon, and don't stay in Sleepy Hollow. There are better places to live. There are no better places. Sleepy Hollow is the best. I love. Well, I, oh my gosh, it's the people are great. The food is great. Uh, the where you know that we're near the water. We're near a farm. People like roam around it. on horses at night without heads. Or that headless horseman all the time. I mean. Um, you know, a lot of young families. It's a great place. Okay. We are so, probably going to leave, but not not because we want to necessarily. Okay. Um, should I get a flex or a tight end from waivers? I have Allen Robinson and Higby. Yeah, I would get a flex. I think you need yeah. a big upgrade over. Agree, Robinson. Robinson. Plus, like and Higby. the flex you get is probably going to be better than the tight end, and you get. True. Uh, but yeah, the Rams' offense is definitely. One to avoid. I'm assuming no Stafford this week. Yeah, I would imagine after a concussion comes back immediate another concussion. The mixtape saga. <laughs> make a mix a mixtape for my best friend. Plenty of Aerosmith on there, but also lots of Rage Against the Machine. Okay. Okay, I like Rage Against the Machine. They're fun. I did make a mix a mixtape for my best friend, one of my best friends back in high school, to get us pumped up for soccer games as we were okay. on the soccer team, and there was some Rage Against the Machine on there. Um. Would you drop Adam's hair for Jamie's hair in a heartbeat? And would you drop <laughs> DJ or Sutton for Traylon Burks? Who? Uh, I'd, I'd drop DJ more. You're really low on him. I guess I get it. But there are some decent trends with Darnold. I don't think I would drop either. I'd rather wait for, for one. Uh, you know what? I take it back. Bur- I'll drop DJ more for Burks. Screw it. I love Burks' talent. Hollard or ETN next week and rest of the season. I mean, can't you start both? What kind of roster? How good is your roster that you can't start both? But if for some reason your team is so stacked at running back that you can't, I would go ETN. I would go Pollard this week. Oh, ETN. sorry. Pollard versus the Giants. It's just too good of a matchup. I yeah, ETN that. rest of season. If Obviously, if you can only choose one, then you just stick with ETN. But uh, Pollard should go crazy this week, I, I think. Adam's hair is better tonight. Thank you very much. Whoa. Uh, what the- not better than yours, I think. Uh, is it better than yours or just better than mine? By typical. By <laughs> both. By both. Always both. Uh, we did that one. Okay. Would you drop, you know, dropping Kadarius Tony is really tough. Would you drop him for acres? Ooh. Yeah. I, I look at this point with Kadarius Tony. <laughs> what have we seen with this guy? He gets back on the field, immediately injures his hamstring, drops a zero burger on your fantasy lineup. Can you ever confidently start him a season? Like, May is there a non-zero chance you regret dropping him? Yeah, of course. There's like a we a possibility that he stays healthy for you in the fantasy for the fantasy playoffs. But how unlikely does it seem right now? To me, it seems highly unlikely. So the player's been injured his entire career. At Florida, he had one total healthy season, and they only played 12 games that year. I'm pretty sure he wasn't. And he was banged up and still played. Like he almost missed games. Like I don't know. I just I don't trust Tony. I don't want him in my lineups. I just got burned this week. I literally lost the fantasy matchup because he got me a zero and I had Juju. I had to go to Tony. I didn't want to. I had to. And so I just, I don't want you to go through what I went through with a zero in your lineup. I didn't even mention that the Rams waived Daryl Henderson. Daryl Henderson. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, it is. I'm going to give acres 14, 15 carries a game. Right. Especially with no Matthew Stafford. If he doesn't play. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd rather he, it'll be the same either way, but uh, yeah, fine. Cut Tony for, for acres. Grab Njoku. Uh, yeah. You should grab Njoku. Yeah. Watson coming back. Sure. This is always when we get around this time of year. Is it wrong to lose a game for a better seed? 
Oh, I know what he's trying to say. Number one has an unbeatable team from acquired. Okay, so he's trying to lose so he doesn't have to match up with the one seed. But to me, it makes no sense because if you lose more games, you'll be that six seed. And then even if you win your first matchup, you'll play the one, right? Yeah. Like if you lose, how do you avoid the one seed? If you I think win? you avoid the one by winning, right? Maybe if you get into the three, five game and or the, you get into the three, four, four five. Game, uh, sorry. You get into the four or five game instead of the three, six game. Then you have to hope for the three to lose. Like you have the, you have the three seed and you want to drop down to the five seed because you don't reseed after the first round of the playoffs or something like that. Hmm. I don't I don't think it's a good idea, regardless. You're gonna have to beat him at some point, right? Yep. Um who is the highest on the waiver out of Palmer, Demarcus Robinson, Jarek McKinnon, Zay Jones, and Nico Collins? Palmer for me. Yeah, me without too. a doubt. Me too. Um two QB league. You like Dalton, Colt McCoy, Tim Darnold, or Flacco? <laughs> is Flacco definitely gonna start? No. Okay. Um, I think I would go with Dalton. Dalton, same, but it's not. I don't really. Uh, you know what? I, I, think I, I think I might go with Simeon. You know what? I'm going with Darnold. I, officially, I would go with Dalton, but Darnold, Simeon is Darnold not. Darnold officially for me. Darnold officially. All right. Would you trade away Kelsey for nope. him and Higby? Nope. No. I'm not trading Travis Kelsey. If you have Travis Kelsey, enjoy the ride. Why would you ever trade this dude? Would you trade Higby or would you trade Kelsey for Lamb and Pollard? Huh. No. <laughs> no. I'm mad I don't have enough Kelsey. Like I have like 40% exposure, but before the year I considered just getting him in every league because I thought there was going to be such a big advantage from between him and the next tight end. And it played out exactly as I thought it would be. And I just didn't get enough. I had like 40% exposure. Remember when you criticized my Scott Fishbowl team? When did I go? Um, when, I, for what? when I drafted it, I'm sure. For what? I don't know. For not being good, because you never think any of my teams are good. Of course, I <laughs> have Travis Kelsey. That's not true. I never said none of your teams are good. But did you bring up, I don't know if you brought up on the Monday show or the Sunday show, but it's worth reporting. <laughs> Who won our matchup this week in the one fantasy league we were playing in? You are so dumb that you don't even know that we played in two fantasy leagues and you won and both. I won both. Oh yes. my god, it's so good. <laughs> one of them I think was the Oil Volave. That's the one that always stands out to me. That no, name. I didn't play you in Oil Volave. Okay. I'll show you Oil Volave in a second, but but check this out. This was my game with Dan. Look at this race to the bottom. I knew this was gonna be a rough week for me. Um, look at my freaking team. Let's see who I have on the bench. I had Tua on the bench. I have Godwin. I have Chase. So you call me on this week. With I got DJ stuck with a zero Clark. from a kicker and I still won. I got DJ Chark, Nico Collins, right. Harris Marshall, Elijah. I had McCoy. to play Trey McBride as my tight end because of Goddard's injury. Look at my bench. I still I won. Do a Godwin and Chase on my bench. Oh, you have Tyreek Hill on your bench. Okay. Yeah, how about that? You see Tyreek Hill staring right oh, at and you. Travis Etienne on your and bench. Travis Etienne staring right, right at right, you. Right. Right. I still have a better record than you. I'd I like to. I'd like to point that out. Well, I'd like to point out that I didn't even know this league existed until three weeks ago, and I've completely won every game since. Look at uh, this is what I did to Schaefer in oh, Schaefer, Tommy. Schaefer. Oh, 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 my god, <laughs> Schaefer 56. What the this is and, a full, this is a full PPR. I don't think Netflix 56. Schaefer. How did, did you I, do that? Am I reading that right? Does that say 56 total points? In a full PPR super flex league, and it, it, he doesn't every point he scored. Oh my god, there wasn't even an inactive. Well, on show there. my bench. At least I got Brady and Tyreek Hill on the bench. It was a buy, it's not like. Oh, yeah, they would have scored a 58 <laughs> points to put you. Well, I mean, the... he scored 170 points. Uh, Dan, I just beat you in this league like two weeks ago, anyway. So <laughs> I think week nine, I got you. Let's see what okay. that was. Here's Dan Schneier losing to Heath with 128. That's a respectable loss. <laughs> Man, I put, I, I put up, oh, I did not have the highest Who's that you know zero. What? Who's that zero right we there? We showed up just like the Vikings showed up. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's that zero in my lineup? That oh, Rondo. Uh, oh, I got screwed by the oh, Rondo. Actually, might, you I might. You could. I might. I might have won this game if I didn't get screwed. But then again, I did get twenty-four from a kicker. So let's not look at that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty good. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, wait, this is a great. What kind of fantasy analyst doesn't always in a league? It's a great question. Well, I'll tell you what. Sustained success. Let me. Let me. Let me <laughs> confirm what happened here. Okay. <laughs> I regret what happened here, but. When you have when you're in a, when you're a fantasy analyst, right? On the CBS app, 
you're doing a, sh- a crazy amount of leagues during <laughs> how, the off season. How many leagues? Where are we going? A crazy that? amount of leagues because we're doing a two mocks a week, sustained success. Then like a third sometimes. <laughs> then we're playing out leagues. We're doing all sorts of things. So eventually you're loaded up on your app page with like 38 to 50, 45 leagues. So I hit hide on the ones that were not playing out. I made a mistake. And on this league, I thought we weren't playing it out because it was the magazine league. And I thought that was for the magazine that we did. It was like a mock draft. And so I hit hide. And then I had this awful week. I, I, who knows how many weeks I had like that, but I had this awful week where I had a bunch of inactives. And then Jamie called me out for it. And I was like, oh my God, the league was hidden. That's what happened to me. So I unhid the league. Since then, I haven't lost a game. And I just destroyed Adam. <laughs> I have Foster Morrow in a standard league. Should I drop him for Hurst? Everett, Ingram, or Gasicki. Um, the same. We had this, you know, we had this discussion a little bit earlier. Yeah. Morrow versus Ingram. Nah. I think you can stick with Morrow. Yeah, me too. But Ingram is going to have more long-term appeal, probably. Give up? Ooh, no, I don't think I'm doing this. Grade the trade. Get Gino and oh my god, I got to give you a D plus, my man. I'm so sorry. This is not a good trade. I don't know if you're looking at the picture, I think it's. Oh, a good I'm sorry, trade. Jersey. This is this is my lady. This jersey's uh, the cat. Oh, and there's the cat. I don't know. Are you a cat guy, Adam? I feel like you are. I have a cat. Yeah. Yeah. You you strike me as a cat guy. I'll, t- I'll tell you my story with cats. <laughs> you know, I don't know what that means, but screw you. <laughs> it's not a it's not a bad thing. I used to hate cats, and then I've learned to love cats because a few people close to my life have cats, and then, and then I started hanging out and I started noticing. You know, cats aren't that bad. They the problem with cats is like they're not as affectionate as dogs, but they're they have their own ways of showing affection. Oh, cats are amazing. My cat. Yeah. yeah, every night she like snuggles with me and oh, wow. she knocks all of my stuff off the <laughs> coffee table and breaks the remote control and the baby monitor and all. Yeah, so she's very nice and also a big pain in the butt. But uh, do I drop the cards DST for the? Yes, you do. You absolutely do that. Yep, that's a lock. Uh, Dan in the spin cycle right now. Um, uh, I don't know if that is that because I'm spinning in my chair with the mic moving, or are you just saying I'm trying to like avoid what... Oh, the, the league thing, the hidden league. It's yeah. truth, Elliot. I swear to God, I did that. I hid the league by mistake, but now I'm six and five. My roster looks a thousand times better than Azers. looks a thousand times better than most of the league, and I just won them with, with Tri- Tyreek Hill and ETN on bye weeks. I mean, what more do I need to say? Yeah. <laughs> I had much worse buys than no, you. I trade back Prescott for Lamar Jackson. I read Kill and Etienne are like two of the top 24 players in fantasy. And okay, you, I had, and Mar- you had worse bye weeks. Jamar Chase, Chris Godwin. Jamar Chase is not a bye week. He's injured. And two it's on the bye low. I had Jamar Chase, Godwin. So just Godwin and two. And two. So it's Godwin, two versus Tyreek and Etienne. And I think the world knows Tyreek and Etienne. And if you know Jamar Chase, I should have had it against you. Yeah, all right. Should I trade back for <laughs> Should I trade Dak for Lamar? I would keep Dak. I'm, I'm scared of Lamar. Yeah, me too. I would keep Dak, and I never thought I'd say this, but I don't like what I've seen from Lamar from a fantasy standpoint. Non-PPR, one QB league. I have Olave, Debo, Davis, Tua, and Hurts. Mm-hmm. Uh, should I trade Tua, and is that Gabe Davis, I'm assuming, for Jamar Chase? Oh, no. I'm, I'm on a heavy no here. Really? Because of the injury? Uh, I guess the whole thought process is, yeah, it is because of the injury for me. I just don't trust it fully, and I really like Gabe Davis. Rest, but I guess I didn't fully factor in the f- like that you have Hurts and Tua. I just always think with these deals, like, can't you find something better for Tua or Hurts, right? Like, and Jamar Chase? A healthy Jamar Chase is amazing, but is he going to be healthy at any? Like, he's off the crutches apparently, but he's not going to play this week, right? No, he might. I mean, they haven't ruled him out for this week. Yeah. All right. I can see it. I, I'd personally try to upgrade for like a Tyreek Hill in this spot or something. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Right, yeah. Shoot, shoot a little higher. Yeah. I agree. And I also just think like, I don't know if I want Tua or Hurts rest of the season. Earlier this year, I'd be like, oh, slam dunk Hurts. Now I'm like, eh, Tua is just ripping up yards through the air and throwing a lot of touchdowns. Would you give Pollard for kind of like a Mahomes light? He's kind of like a poor man's Mahomes. Uh, right now at least and i know people are gonna go crazy at that comment i don't mean how they play independent I'm just yeah. fantasy i'm just talking fantasy oh no, you said he's as good i get it yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. pollard or camara um rest of season i give pollard i get camara i think this is like a like a c c plus solid trade i'd personally rather pollard i see more league winning appeal there but camara seems like a safer play cat's name is cheese and oh. he's currently purring on my lap there you there go, you go. 
you strike me as a cat guy has never once been a compliment completely. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, I have Eckler, Kamara, Patterson, Connor, and Foreman. Should I drop Foreman <laughs> for Spiller? No. It, honestly, if you're going to drop one, it it might be Patterson. But no, I wouldn't do it. No. Nope. Uh, ah, would I? The question is, how good is Spiller if Eckler gets hurt? And I don't think he's going to be good. I think if if Eckler gets hurt at any point, there's going to be more of a committee than than people think. Um, cats crap in a box. It's perfect. I agree. Yeah, I mean that's the good thing about cats. You can you don't have to worry yeah. about that type of stuff. You feed them dry. If you feed them dry food, you really don't have to worry about much. I feed them wet both. Yeah, you're uh, you're you spoil that cat. Well. She needs her medicine. We have to put it in her wet food. Ah, I got you. Yes, I do play an IDP. I'm glad the defensive stuff works. I it, there's so many defensive injuries. I, I try to highlight the ones that really matter. Okay. I'll tell you for sure the Giants are going to be pretty beat up uh, defensively. Yeah, Noah Dory Jackson, their best corner. Yeah, I I mean, is Fabian Moreau going to play? Probably Fabian Moreau not. might not play either. Yep. Um. So do we play? Yeah, I do play in one IDP league. It starts nine IDPs. It's wild. Um, and I am get this. I am four and seven. Okay. I am in a four way tie for sixth place. Oh, wow. The last playoff four time. and seven. Wow. And I really think I'm about to tear this league apart. It's like, I'm getting my, I'm, I'm going to start Brady, uh, Aaron Jones, Latavius Murray. That's fine. But it's full PPR. I'm going to start Tyree kill Keenan Allen, Gabe Davis every week. I do like that. I got Dalton Schultz. I got a flex. I got a lot of good flex options. I'm going to rip this league apart, uh, and I'm looking forward. To it. I've never seen that kind of confidence from a 4 or 7 team in my life, but We're, I guess. It's been Keenan Allen's killed me, and now it's time to, to really get. Okay. Uh, would you start the Dolphins against, who they have, Houston? Yeah, or Houston. the Jets. Um, against Chicago. Uh, if Simeon plays, I would definitely start the Jets. I think I'd start the Jets regardless, personally. If you have to make a choice, right? Yeah, I don't. And Fields is not going to play this. I, I feel. You don't think so? I mean, there was a report that he was almost certainly I'd not be out going of the to. season. There's the report. Some people are the speculation he might be done for the year. Yeah, yeah. And they don't have much reason to play him, by the way. The rest of the year. One more hurt. here. Uh, Tua and Gabe Davis. Uh, by the way, this is Eric going. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. good. You have that, you know, your voice is so high that you can hit that note. <laughs> Screw you, Shire. It's true. But it's not a, what, that's not a negative thing to say. Oh, you love cats and your voice is really high. But that's just like a feature, a high voice. It's not a bad thing. Okay. The cats right. thing, you can, I mean, who knows about that? But <laughs> <laughs> can't help you the voice. Two and Gabe Davis or Lamb and Adams. Um, I mean, it's so hard when you throw a QB into a type of deal like this. Like, do you have a backup quarterback that you like and is p- pushing for QB one every week? If that's the case, sure. I like the lamb of Devonte Adams side, but yeah. I love to arrest the season. So you better have a backup plan, a quarterback. If you're doing this. Thanks everybody for watching. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, we will not have a live stream on Thursday afternoon. Mm. We got to make our corn su- corn souffle and, uh, and yeah, have a great Thanksgiving. So we'll talk to you Wednesday tomorrow for some trade talk and previewing all the Thanksgiving games. We'll talk side dishes. Um, Heath hates Halloween, but he loves Thanksgiving. So that'll be fun. <laughs> Dave's out of town. Um, we'll talk to you then. Thanks again for Dan and Thomas. I'm Adam. Good night, everyone.